in the last section or lesson, we did talk about average velocity. And we did define average velocity as the displacement of an object divided by the time interval. In other words, it is the change in position in a given direction divided by the time taken. So the definition of average velocity was written as V average equal to the change in position divided by the change in time. And what we did notice was the fact that the average velocity of a particle has, has the same direction as the displacement of that particle and depends only on the initial and final point. Now, suppose you are driving a car or maybe seated in a car. When you look at your speedometer, you see a speed or you see a velocity, which is basically speed in a given direction. What you see or what you read is not the average speed or the average velocity, but it is the instantaneous velocity of that car at that particular time. Remember, instantaneous. So we're going to talk about instantaneous velocity. Instantaneous velocity is the velocity of an object at a given instant of time. In other words, it is the average speed when the time taken approaches zero at that given instant of time. This explains why the instantaneous velocity is defined as the limit of the average speed as delta t approaches zero. It is this, the meaning of this expression is this. It is the, the average speed of that particle at that particular instant of time. That occurs when the change delta t is very, very small. We can expand this as the limit of delta x over delta t as delta t turns to zero i plus the limit of delta y of delta t as delta t turns to zero j plus the limit Delta distance zero of delta z, delta t k. In math, this defines a differential. This means that v is equal to dr over dt which is going to be equal to dx over dti plus dy over dtk plus dz over dtk. This defines the instantaneous velocity at that particular time. Looking at this definition, we can say that V is simply the rate of change of X or R with respect to time. In other words, we can define the instantaneous velocity of a particle or a system or an object as the rate at which its position changes with respect to time. Now here's the deal. Instantaneous velocity is a vector. 
That means it has a magnitude and a, a direction. The magnitude of instantaneous velocity is instantaneous speed. Let me say that again. The magnitude of instantaneous velocity is instantaneous speed. And that means that if you look at this expression, V bar is equal to Vxi plus Vyj plus Vzk, where Vx is simply dx all divided by dt, Vy is equal to dy all divided by dt, and Vz is equal to dz all divided by dt. Now, the magnitude of V is the instantaneous speed which is going to be equal to Vx squared plus Vy squared plus Vz squared. This defines the speed of the particle. Now, what about the direction? This is really crucial. Remember that V is the derivative of R with respect to T. In math, the derivative of x with respect to time defines a line tangent to tangent at that particular point. That means that the direction, listen carefully please, that means that the direction of instantaneous velocity is simply a line tangent to the path at that point in the direction of motion. Let me say that again. The direction of instantaneous velocity is simply a line tangent to the path at that point in the direction of motion. Which means that, let's say a particle is moving in a path like this. In this, this is the direction of motion. We have point A, B, C, as well as point D. So the direction of the speed at A will be a line tangent to the path. So this will be VA. This will be VB. This will be VC, and this will be VD. And this is because the instantaneous velocity is def simply defined as dr over dt. Simply defined as dr over dt.